you, you have to understand why you're going through the period that's causing you to make you want to give up. See, the devil has one mission, is to rob you of your destiny. If he can get you to give up, you have been robbed of your destiny. If he gets you to never follow your dream, he robs you of your destiny. When you have thoughts that are negative, that's not God, that's Satan. You gotta get focused, man. You gotta understand that this hard time that you're going through prepares you for the life God has for you. All the hard times, everything you ever thought you would not make it through, you got past it. Now, if you're currently going through something right now, guess what? You're going to get past that too. We may not realize it, but we're always feeding ourselves. What we watch, listen to, the people we're around, that's feeding our inner man. Here's the key. Whatever you feed is going to grow. If you're always feeding negative thoughts, you're feeding doubt, feeding mediocrity, feeding fear. If you feed guilt, if you feed fear, it's going to become larger. What if you spent that same energy feeding your faith, feeding your dreams? What are you allowing in your spirit? The people you're spending time with, the thoughts you're dwelling on all day, is that inspiring you? pushing you towards your dreams? Or is it junk food causing you to compromise? A friend of mine was diagnosed with a serious illness. The doctor put him on a very strict diet. It was only raw vegetables, nuts, grains, very limited. Now I asked him if he was going to do it. He said, what do you mean? I don't have a choice. My life depends on it. Today, I'm putting you on a new diet. No more junk food. No more dwelling on thoughts of worry. I don't have what it takes. No more hanging around people that are feeding you negativity. Your prescription is for faith food. Feed your dreams. Feed your confidence. Feed your destiny. You feed your faith like that. What's happening is the doubt is getting weaker and weaker. What you don't feed will eventually die. You may have some weeds in your life today. We all do. Don't be alarmed by the weeds. Just don't make the mistake of watering the weeds. Don't let them take up any space in your mind. What you quit watering will eventually go away. Are you watering what you don't want? The enemy's main tool is deception. He would love for you to go through life watering the weeds, dwelling on fear, insecurity, mistakes of the past. Don't fall into that trap. When you're in a tough time, instead of feeding the doubt, feed your faith. I'm coming out. God always causes me to triumph. This too shall pass. Maybe you've had bad breaks in life. And you could easily be discouraged. Don't feed the self-pity. Quit reliving the hurts. You can't feed your history and feed your destiny at the same time. How you were raised, who hurt you, who you lost, that's history. You cannot go into a new season if you're always looking back at the old. Quit putting energy into negative things of the past. The way to get past it is you have to starve it. Quit thinking about what you didn't get, how you can prove to them that they shouldn't have left you. If you will put that same energy into your destiny, expecting God's favor, then God will give you beauty for those ashes. You don't have to pay anybody back. God will be your vindicator. The scripture says offenses will come. Betrayals will come. Things we don't understand. It's painful enough when they happen. But if you make the mistake of feeding the hurt, then it's going to continue to be painful. You cannot get well if you're always reopening the wounds. That's making it worse. It's tempting to hold on. Sometimes you wake up, it's on the forefront of your mind. You have to ask yourself, am I going to keep putting energy into something that's taken me the wrong direction? And yes, there's a season of mourning. You don't have to be superhuman. 
But you can't let a season of mourning turn into a lifetime of mourning. At some point, you have to say, yes, I'm hurt, but this is a new day. I'm not feeding my history anymore. I'm not dwelling on my disappointments. I'm not reliving my hurts. I'm putting my energy into my destiny. Put a smile on your face. God still has something more rewarding than you've ever imagined. I talked to a lady that had been married for over 20 years. Her husband, without any warning, he moved out and ended the marriage. And this lady was so heartbroken. Two years later, she was still so upset. I told her what I'm telling you. You can't keep feeding your history. Don't feed the hurt. It's taking you in the wrong direction. If somebody left you, their part in your story is over. If they walked away, you don't need them to fulfill your purpose. But if you live thinking that you can't be happy, then you're going to miss the new things God has in store. Sometimes God puts an end to things that we don't understand. Don't keep mourning over something that you cannot change. I saw this lady several years after we had talked. She had this handsome man by her side. She told how they had recently gotten married. She went on and on telling me what an amazing man this was. When you quit putting energy into your history and you start putting it into your destiny, God will pay you back for the unfair situation. And that person that left you, they're a weed. Quit watering the weed. This is a new season. God has divine signed up for you. Instead of feeding the hurt, feed your faith. Don't sit around thinking, oh man, I missed my big opportunity. God knows what he's doing. Sometimes he will close doors that we think should be open. The relationship didn't work out. God put a period. That's history. Now keep moving forward. Keep feeding your faith. At the right time, God will open a better door for you. If you associate with the wrong people, they can feed you doubt, feed you gossip. You're going to become like the people you hang around. Life is too short to hang around people that are causing you to compromise, pulling you down. You don't have to make some big announcement, but little by little, you should spend less and less time with them. Sometimes we don't want to rock the boat. We think if we make changes, we won't have any friends. You may be lonely for a season, but God will give you new friends, people that will push you up and not pull you down. But if you don't get rid of the wrong people, you will never meet the right people. The people around you are contagious. What they have, over time, you're going to catch. Proverbs says, when you walk with wise men, you will become wise. You have to be selective with who you choose to spend time with. You're going to catch what they have. I separated myself from somebody that I loved. Well, why didn't you try and help them? Because they wouldn't help themselves. Most people will die rather than change. Oh, and, and get mad at you if you try and help them. You just got to get around the right people. Life is like an elevator. The higher you go up, you have to stop and let some people off because they don't share your vision. I'm asking you to find happy friends. The people who are closest to you need to be stable, responsible people that move you towards your destiny time to make a change you can't please everyone i'm telling you life will open up for you join the five percent walk away from the 95 lend a helping hand but don't fall into their poor philosophical scenario switch gears switch language switch strategy start with the simplest of disciplines you understand completely what i'm going to tell you from this moment on your life will never be the same again the things you want just seem to fall in line and from now on, you won't have the problems, the worries, the gnawing lump of anxiety that perhaps you've experienced before. They'll be things of the past. Here's the key to success. We become what we think about. 
and you go to sleep at night, how are you going to feel about your day? All depends on who you decide to include in your day. You got 24 hours in a day. Stop running around acting as if you don't have a choice. You do have a choice. Waking up early, working out every day. If you start with those two kind of cornerstones, and then the other thing is, you know, figure out what you're going to do during the day. Don't, don't go to bed without a plan of how you're going to handle the next day. To go forward or to go back, you're going to always have that decision. I made all of my dreams bigger than my fears. So when I felt like quitting, the results would have been devastating to the goal I was trying to attain. My motivation was I was just exhausted from poverty. See, whatever you're worried about, if someone called you right now and said, listen, you got two days to live, I'm telling you, you won't be worried about your bills, ladies and gentlemen. Look at your life right now. If you want to keep on getting what you're getting, keep on doing what you do. You've got to be willing to change your ways. You do have a choice. You love rumors, you love issues, you love problems, you love people calling you with their problems, you love it. That's why at the end of every night you are drained because you are submerged yourself in dysfunctional things, people, and situations. I have a schedule and I, I execute the schedule. Parts of my day are very structured. Parts of my day are very disciplined, which gives me freedom in other parts of the day. I was sick of living in my car. I've been living in my car for three years. I was sick of not having money. And so for me to quit, and see, that's what people do. People quit when it's at their hardest moment. But if it's at your hardest moment, why would you quit? I mean, think about it. If you're going through hell, why stop there? Move, keep going. Your life is working. If you don't like what you have produced, you're a director, you are the star, you wrote this script. If you want to begin to make your stuff happen for you, I think that it's very important that you start trusting yourself. Listen to yourself. Don't try and make everything logical. There's some things about life that defies logic, that you just can't explain how the outcome is going to be. And at the very end of the day, what I do, one of the last things I do after my prayer is I read through my goals and my dreams. I picture them. When I get my sleep, it's going to work on revealing to me. It's playing back the video, believe it or not, of my day in my mind, and it helps me wake up ready to get them as well. They have the magic touch. You've heard them say that about someone. Everything he touches turns to gold. And have you ever noticed that a man who becomes successful tends to continue to become successful? It's because of goals. Some of us have them, some don't. People with goals succeed because they know where they're going. Don't let neglect destroy your days, destroy your life, and destroy your future. Go back and do what you can. And if you'll do what you can, then life will give you some extraordinary things to do. You've got to take care of the small disciplines before life will give you a chance to handle the more complicated disciplines. You've got to control the beginning and the end of your day with your thinking. And so one of the first things you need to do when you wake up is to take a five minute window and you visually see your goals and dreams. Picture them as videos in your mind. Picture them as you possessing them and see them written down on a sheet of paper. This will begin to control your mind for the day. And you are here this week to learn vital information about creating the future and be defined by a vision of the future instead of the memories of the past. Why we conform. And the trouble is that we're acting like the wrong percentage group, the 95% who don't succeed. These people believe that their lives are shaped by circumstances, by things that happen to them, by exterior forces. They're outer directed people. A habit is something you do without giving it any conscious thought. And you know that most people live by habit. They don't think. The late and great Dr. McFarland from down in Kentucky said 2% of the people think, 3% of the people think they think, and he said 95% of the people would rather die than think. The wonderful thing is this, if you do what other successful people do, you eventually get the same result that they do. Most people are broke up until their 40s and 50s. So if you're broke today, you're just one in the game. The only question is, do you stay there? 
And the answer is no. If you are not defined by some vision that is bigger than you, and you are not passionate about that vision, then you're left with the old hardware of the past in your brain, and you will be predictable in your life. Now, when I started off in, in this many years ago, I uh, came from very poor beginnings. I uh, dropped out of high school. I uh, could only get laboring jobs. I was told, by the way, if you don't get a good education, you won't do well in life. And I believed that for a long time until I found out there's hundreds of thousands, millions of people who dropped out of high school who went on to become millionaires and billionaires as well. A survey was made one time that covered a lot of men, working men, and these men were asked this question. Why do you get up in the morning? 19 out of 20 had no idea. If you ask them, they'll say, everyone goes to work in the morning. And that's the reason they do it. Learning is the beginning of life change. Some people want to start with motivation. You don't start with motivation. You can tell, we don't, you know, we don't spend that much time on motivating. And we're here, enough motivation, certainly. But here's the best motivation we've got going. When we bring our dedication and let it show, we let the work of our hands show, that's the motivation we have. You got to learn how to walk by faith and not by sight. That once you begin to trust yourself, life takes on a whole new meaning because now I want you to do that feeling that you are led. When we think a new thought, literally opens a space up in our minds, in our lives, that never existed before prior to having that thought. And what happens is your unconscious and subconscious mind goes to work on filling in that space with the people, places, resources, and things to fill up that space and fully furnish it. That's the power of how we think. People then spend the majority of their life talking about why they never arrive at their vision of the future because of some past experience. You can exercise them and you can literally create the start of anything because you are creative. The only thing about a man that is a man is his mind. Everything else you can find in a figure of horse. At some point, we all bought into this lie that you've got to feel ready in order to change. At some point, you're going to have the courage. At some point, you're going to have the confidence. And it's, it's complete garbage. And so there are so many people in the world, and, and, and you know, you may be watching this right now, and you have these incredible ideas, and what you think is missing is motivation. And that's not true. Our work is to fully express that which we are. Our work is to express that which God has designed us to be. We uh, get to have more and do more and give more and be more because the truth is we already are more. We say that success is not an accident. Failure is not an accident. So if you just follow the tracks of other successful people, no matter where you're starting from, you eventually get to the same place that they get. Two most important things we need to have to be happy and healthy is a sense of control, things are happening for a reason, and a sense of coherence, a feeling that things fit together. Your future is in your hands. You know what that means? You got to work on your mind, fortify yourself. You got to upgrade, level up your skill set. You want to be in a community of collaborative, supportive relationships that's going in your direction. And anybody that don't have the mindset that you have, let them go. Just get stronger. Get better. We've all got those personal winters. I'm asking all of you to get better in spite of the winters, in spite of the downturn. The money downturn, the social downturn, the personal downturn, whatever it is. The key is not to wish for a better winter. The key is to wish for more strength, more wisdom, more courage, get better, get wiser, get stronger. Some of you are having problems with battles of things you're trying to change and you can't change them. Old habits that you were keeping for the last 20 years and now you want to change and it's tough to change. 
If you keep watching pornography, you keep reading dirty books, the first time you see it, it doesn't bother you. But if you keep seeing it, it becomes downloaded. When an idea comes into your mind, you want to ask yourself this question. Don't ask whether it's wrong or whether it's right. That's not the question. You know what the question is? Will that idea take me from where I am and move me in the direction of the star that I'm shooting at? You're never going to feel like it. Motivation's garbage. You, you only feel motivated to do the things that are easy. Was why is it so hard to do the little things that would improve my life? And what I've come to realize, the way that our minds are designed, is our minds are designed to stop at all costs from doing anything that might hurt you. Our work is to simply bring into the expression that which has been impressed, to do the work of the soul so that the seeds of greatness that have been sown within us, we do the work that we have to do so that those seeds of greatness can manifest in our life, world, and affairs. You have to become a totally different human being. In order to be to achieve something you've never achieved before, you have to become someone you've never been before. It's the qualities that you need to develop, qualities on the inside, incredible qualities that make you a vastly better person. Not only better in terms of character, discipline, decision making, strength, and so on, they make you a far better person. They round out your character in a far better way. Because you can actually learn faster and actually have an ease, a confidence, to be able to succeed, but also have this level of, of harmony inside of yourself, this clarity of thought. Sharpen the saw. The metaphor here is if you have all this wood to cut and you have a saw with a dull blade, when do you want to sharpen it? Because a lot of people are going to work hard, it's going to work a lot harder, and they're at the sweat and perspire and work three or four times harder when they could have sharpened their saw. It's a new day, and it's a new day, it's got to be a new you. A lot of people have thrown in the towel, have forgotten how we got here. We rather walk in dignity rather than ride in shame. It's not the experience, it's your know, reflection turns experience into it, Well, we get good at that by understanding that experience is. After every experience, I have to pull away. And I have to ask myself, to what I mean? How you think and how you feel creates the state of being. So if you think insecure thoughts, in a matter of seconds, you are going to feel insecure. Your brain is monitoring how you're feeling and you think more insecure thoughts. And the repetition of that cycle conditions the body to become the mind of insecurity. And then the person says, I am insecure. Don't go untouched. Don't go unmoved. When you walk out of here, open yourself up. Don't build up the walls. Take the walls down. Let yourself be touched by what's going on out there. Let your heart get touched. Your life comes down to your decisions. And if you change your decisions, you will change everything. And at some point, I think we all hit that moment in life where things just are not going how you thought they would go. And, and what's amazing about those moments is we all respond very differently. And so imagination then gives us the ability to create the inner picture. We have an inexhaustible imagination. And so consequently, we have an unlimited future.